Hello everyone. Last year, on the eve of a big sale, I recorded a video about useful modules from China. Judging by the views and feedback, videos of this kind are relevant. And now it's the 11th of November after all. So, let's keep going. In that video, I mentioned my attitude towards the sale. And for you too, I think it's no secret how this works. But we'll skip all that and get straight to the point. Today, I'll show you some more gadgets that many radio enthusiasts use in various DIY projects, as well as devices that can be useful in everyday life. I'll start perhaps with fast charging modules for gadgets. It's important to distinguish these things from charging systems for lithium ion batteries and power bank boards. We'll also talk about them today. Charging modules are devices where a specific constant voltage is applied at the input and at the output, often on a Type C connector. We get various fast charging protocols. This allows you to charge and power not only smartphones and laptops, but also other devices that require a voltage from 5 to 20 volts. After connecting a device, the charging module communicates with it and automatically provides the voltage needed by the consumer. These devices come in various power capacities, ranging from several tens of watts to a hundred and more. Here's one of the good options for such modules. Despite its small size, this device can deliver up to 65 watts using the power delivery protocol. I'll say more, in real tests, 70 watts were achieved. The input voltage can range from 8 to 30 volts. It's important to understand that the module is a step-down converter, and if you input 12 volts hoping to get 20 volts out, that won't happen. The module is built using fingerness topology and has high efficiency. Everything is assembled on a single chip with the marking erased. The maximum output voltage is up to 20 volts with a current of up to 3.5 amps. It's a great option if you want to make, for example, a powerful charger from a car cigarette lighter. The module is equipped with several protections, such as overheating protection, overload protection, and short circuit protection at the output. And this is a charging system for lithium ion batteries based on the FM4256 chip. The great thing about this device is that it is designed for charging two S assemblies and acts as a boost converter stabilized by current and voltage. That is, we supply 5 volts at the input and at the output we get about 8.4. The two the assembly will be charged to this exact voltage. The maximum charging current is up to 1 and 2 tenths amperes and depends on the shunt resistance on the board. The converter is highly efficient, synchronous, with an efficiency of up to 94%. It has protection against overheating short circuits at the output, as well as overvoltage and undervoltage at the input. It can also charge batteries that require a higher voltage for a full charge, up to 4.35 volts per cell. The module does not provide cell balancing. Another similar charging system, but slightly more advanced, is implemented on the IP2326 chip. Many sellers indicate that this module can charge a 3 S assembly, but the chip was originally designed for a 2 S battery. It is also a boost synchronous converter with a lot of protections built into the chip itself. The maximum charging current is up to 1.5 amps and it can also be adjusted, as well as the charge termination voltage. It is claimed that the module is also capable of balancing cells. However, I did not see the balancing function and I tested many such modules. The maximum power is up to 15 watts. It has a couple of LED indicators showing the charging status. There is an option to connect an external temperature sensor. The upper and lower limits of the input voltage can be set here by selecting the appropriate resistors. The module also allows you to set a timing so that when power is supplied to the input, charging does not start immediately but after a certain period of time. I have repeatedly implemented these modules in different designs. I would say the impressions are so. There are some where all algorithms and functions work properly, and there are glitchy ones. There were also cases when the modules inexplicably stopped working. Another charging board for lithium-ion batteries based on the IP2312 chip. This board is designed for charging a single lithium cell, basically the same as the TP4056, just more powerful and pulsed. It is possible to set the charging current up to 3 amperes, which is quite significant for such a small device. The converter is again synchronous with high efficiency. The output voltage or the charge termination voltage can be set within the range of 4.2 to 4.4 volts. This is a simpler system with a minimal number of components, but it performs its functions reliably. The next module is designed for charging a single cell of not only classic lithium but also lithium iron phosphate, the well-known TP5000 for a long time. The input voltage of the board is up to 10 volts, 
The maximum charge current is up to 2 amperes, and other current values can be set. The charge termination voltage for classic lithium is on average 4.2 volts, and for lithium iron phosphate it is 3.6 volts. There are a couple of indicators showing the charge status. A decent universal. Option for many tasks. Let's move on to boards for building power banks, and we'll start with a simple, cheap, and quite good board based on the SW6208S chip. This board is equipped with two standard USB Type A ports, one USB C port, a Lightning port, and a micro USB port. The main interest is in the Type C port, as it is bi directional. It works for both charging and discharging. Notably, it features a display showing the charge level. Some resistors can be used to change operating modes, set the battery capacity, and so on. There are versions of similar boards without a display with LED indicators. They are slightly cheaper. For medium tasks, it's quite a suitable board, considering its low cost. The board is powered by a single S lithium ion assembly. The charging voltage ranges from 5 to 13 and a half volts. This means that a fast charging function is supported for charging internal batteries. And for gadget charging, the output is a maximum of 12 volts at 1.5 amps. Many fast charging protocols are also supported, including Power Delivery 3.0. And this little one on IP5310 is not for fast charging, but it's cheap. It features a bi directional Type C and an additional USB A. And that's where the advantage is. And the output can only deliver 5 volts at a current of up to. 3 and 1 tenths amps. The converter is synchronous with high efficiency. A solution like this in 2024 is SOSO, but they are quite popular among undemanding people. There is an almost identical board, but its specifications are more exciting. Again, it has a bi directional Type C and supports many fast charging protocols, including power delivery. The maximum output we can get is up to 12 volts and the maximum output power is 15 to 16 watts. The best part is that the module can charge the power bank's internal batteries with a current of up to 4 amps. If you think that 10 to 20 watts is not serious these days, then check out the power bank module with 100 watts. There is only one Type-C port here, where you can get 20 volts at a current of up to 5 amps and almost all fast charging protocols for any gadgets. The coolest thing is that this board is super versatile. It is a boost, buck, or sepit converter built on synchronous topology. It can work with both classic lithium and lithium iron phosphate batteries. It can work with assemblies up to 6S, with the caveat that there is a 5 volt linear regulator on the board designed for 16 volts of input voltage. It needs to be replaced with one that can accept 30 volts at the input. The board is built on the IP2368 chip, and here literally every function, every parameter can be set by recalculating the corresponding resistors. I showed and explained this in detail on the second channel. So, this is indeed an extremely powerful charger for power bank batteries and a buck converter in one package with a variety of options. One of the nuances is that the board cannot balance and control the voltage on the battery, so your setup will, of course, need a separate BMS board. Preferably with balancing, at least passive. And then I found out that the Chinese have a more powerful version of this board, up to a whole 140 watts. Of course, I bought it and was disappointed. In the first version, we had many resistors in view that set the operating modes making the board versatile with very flexible settings. In this case, the Chinese made several jumpers, which allow you to select the number of series cells, and there are indeed far fewer components on the board. But in fact, the IP2366 chip, on which this board is built, allows you to quickly change any parameter such as voltage or current, or other parameters. To change something on this board, you need to find the necessary resistors, and trace the paths as sellers do not specify what each component is responsible for, unlike how they did with the first board. Our version can output voltage up to 28 volts at a current of up to 5 amps via the Power Delivery Protocol 3 and 1, and it is equipped with a bunch of protections and smart options. To build a full-fledged power bank, as in the first case, the battery needs to be supplemented with a separate BMS system. This version is already larger in size and has a massive aluminum heatsink. 
in terms of efficiency and functionality, it's more or less the same as the first option. And this is a small uninterruptible power supply for a router, a very useful thing if the power goes out often. This option is powered by two lithium-ion cells of the 18650 standard. It serves as a charger and a boost converter. It's important to note that its operation is similar to online uninterruptible power supplies. In other words, this device doesn't need time to switch to UPS mode, which is pretty cool. The system is equipped with protection against deep discharge, overcharge, and short circuits for lithium batteries. The charging is based on the good old TP4056. There is a charge indicator. There is also an output voltage indicator. By the way, this voltage is set by a divider on two resistors. There are versions for 9 and 12 volts. The converter is built on the XR2981 chip. The maximum output current is 1.5 to 1.6 amperes, which should be sufficient for medium routers. Type-C input is 5 volts, a very useful and budget-friendly thing, tested by me multiple times in real conditions. The next module is universal and will allow for the automation of many charging devices. In fact, it is a module for automatically disconnecting the battery at a set voltage threshold. In short, you take a charger, connect this board to its output, and connect the battery to the board's output. Next, you set the desired voltage at which the charging process will stop. So, this thing is not a charging module, but simply a switch. The input voltage is up to 60 volts, and the maximum current is up to 30 amps. The switching is handled by a power relay, which is powered by the battery itself. The indication accuracy and setting accuracy are 0.1 volts. An excellent module for building small laboratory power supplies, the ZK 5KX. It's not new, but it's a cool gadget. With its compact size and fully integrated boost buck converter, it can provide an output voltage of up to 36 volts at a current of up to 5 amps. However, the power is limited to 80 watts. That is, by powering this device, for example, from a 12 volt source, you can get all 36 volts at the output. It has a small display showing the main parameters, which can be calibrated. Control is managed by a pair of buttons and an encoder. It has indicators for operating modes, and it is stabilized both in current and voltage with full adjustment capabilities. It also has a small cooling fan. Of course, there are plenty of similar modules from the Chinese, including much more advanced ones. But this little one is very cheap, and I think will appeal to those who want to assemble an autonomous lab power supply for non-demanding tasks. It shouldn't be considered a full-fledged lab power supply. But still, its capabilities are sufficient for many tasks. On that note, it's probably time to wrap up. Let me remind you that links to full reviews of everything I've shown here will be in the description. There are also links to purchase them. Don't forget to rate this video, and if you liked it, support it with a kind comment. Well, that's all for me today. As always, this was Kazyanov K. With you, until next time, goodbye.